Jim Fossil joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show on the 14-year anniversary of 9-11. Thanks for calling in, Coach. I appreciate it. Hey, Rich, always good to talk to you, man. S same to you. Uh, I'll just give you the floor. And What was your recollection? The flight home, you landed in Newark uh, mere hours before the planes took off and hit the World Trade Center, correct, Coach? Yes, we opened the season on Monday Night Football against Denver, uh, and then we flew home, and we, we probably landed around 6 ish in the morning, something like that. And then as coaches, we, we, the buses went back. We all went down, took a shower, changed our clothes, and went to work. And I'm sitting in my office, and somebody says, you got to turn the TV on. A plane just went into the towers. And so I did. And then everybody in the building. And, uh, I mean, it really stopped us. Now, we had a short week, but we couldn't concentrate on coaching. So we were trying to follow this. And then, uh, you know, the things happened. And, oh, boy. I mean, uh, it was about three days after. Uh, Mary Giuliani called me and said, Jim, would you come over and just walk around and kind of shake hands with the fire department guys and the police and everything, and they'd like to see you. And I, it, that didn't connect the dots with me. I, these guys were over there trying to save lives, but I did. And it was the most uh, the thing that I'll never forget, how I talked to some of those people, and I got to, to know them. And uh, a guy named Frank Palumbo, who had 12 children, perished in that. And I uh, kind of adopted the family. Had them come over to practice, had tickets for them to the game. Uh, but I, I just got really involved in it, and then I formed a foundation. And we're still supporting different causes that still linger from 9-11. Yeah, your foundation, the Jim Fossil Foundation.org, uh, to assist families in the New York metropolitan area whose lives have been impacted by sudden and unexpected tragedy or illness. And um, that's, that's the foundation to which you refer. Is it true that... When you guys and the Giants plane landed in Newark, that you were just a couple of gates away from the United Flight 93 that would take off and wind up into the Trade Center. Is that a true story, Coach? I was told that we the, the gate was right next to us, and then we used to fly out about the same gate, and they had an American flag uh, where that plane took off. And yes, I mean, I I, I went to our uh, football operations guy, and I said, you know, uh, we came in on United. That plane was United. Uh, what was just tell me some things. And uh, he said that it was it was the gate right next to us. Mm. And uh, there are so many memories. I mean, the, our, our video guys came in my office and said, Jim, we got high-powered lenses if you want to look at the buildings. And so I went on top of the United Stadium and looked through a like a telescope, and I could see everything there. I had my boat parked over in uh, Manhattan, and they called me, and they said, Jim, we can rescue some people you don't mind us taking your boat and load some people up and get them out of here. And I said, take my boat and get them out. Just do it. And, uh, and then later on <clears throat> that day, I found out that a guy that I graduated high school, Chick Burlingame, uh, who I knew, him and his brother and his sister, uh, Chick was the uh, captain of the flight that went into the Pentagon. No, what? for real? You, for you... real. And we, we, we've got a uh, uh, memorable thing at the, at, at the high school in his name. Uh, but he he was the captain of the flight, and his wife was supposed to go with him. They were in Boston, and uh, they were going to go to the Angel game and do some things. And then at the last minute, she decided not to go. She said, just come on home. We'll celebrate our anniversary here. And uh, But Chick was the uh, – uh, he was a, he was the captain of that flight. Jim Fossil, former Giants head coach and certainly uh, the head coach of the Giants uh, on the day of 9-11. 2001 joining me here on the program how did the players handle this coach what what what, what did you do with the players because i imagine it was a few days before you even got them together would that be the case uh no the players had to come in we had a lot to do and uh basically you know tuesday was just shot 9-11 uh, we just didn't have anything and then uh russ warren who's our uh, team doctor always comes in on wednesday to do checkups on guys that got hurt or, you know, might need some work or whatever. And uh, then he comes up and I meet with him and Ronnie Barnes, our trainer. And uh, he came up and he said, Jim, I don't really need to go over the injury report because I'm going to tell you one thing right now. These guys are in no shape to play a game Sunday. I mean, if you're down there in that locker room, and I was, he said, Man, these guys are no – you're going to get – we're going to take a lot of these guys home hurt because they're not going to play like that. And so finally uh, he said, I'm going to go. I'm going to call the NFL and I'm going to go there. 
And I'm going to tell them, we should not be playing this next Sunday. These guys are not going to be ready to play football. And one of the more uh, legendary owners of the game, I mean, his nickname is on the football, uh, the Duke, Wellington Marrow, the owner of the Giants at the time. What conversations were you having with him about what his conversations with the commissioner might be having uh, at the time, Coach? Well, he, he had conversations, and, uh, you know, they, they, they just needed a little bit of time. They didn't want to react so fast. You know, gather some information from different teams, talk to a few owners, that type of thing, and then Paul Tagliabue made the right decision. He made the right decision. I mean, we were, we were not ready. I mean, there was all kinds of things that were so memorable to us. It's like Giant Stadium was a, was, a, was a ground where people would drive their car into Giant Stadium, park it in the morning, and get on a bus into the New York City. Okay? There might be 200 cars parked there. All right? And I remember seeing it. And that night when I left, that parking lot was full. And it's never that way. And I went, oh, my God. I mean, how many people perished? They parked the car here. When I drove back in the next morning, about mm. 6 o'clock in the morning, I'd say there was 150 cars still there. And I thought, they just, it made me sick to think those people parked their cars and went into work uh, in the city, and they probably perished. And, uh, Rich, you know, I got so many letters from people that said, you know, thanks for going to the Super Bowl because now you're on Monday Night Football, and the game was so late, it finished after midnight, that I decided to go in late. I wasn't going to get there early. I was going to take a half a day. And if if you guys weren't on Monday Night Football, I'd have probably been in one of those towers. And, uh, you know, people saying thanks for that. I go, geez, really? Jim Fossil joining me here on the program. Uh, and that just, I guess, speaks to sometimes when you're in the sports world and you're doing your job and you've got the tunnel vision of of making sure that you got to prepare for a game and things that nature how, how much it means to to fans just regular people what you do and just gives fresh perspective especially since first responders the number of giant fans that i grew up with who are first responders right jet fans too uh -huh. it's not just the giants they're right. in new york city just the passion they have and just the fact that you could just do anything to help meant so much i'd love to know what 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 you did moving forward to get the team back on the field for the fans and w the connection that you then had with the fans uh, after you got back on the field, Coach? Well, you know, I changed my mood, okay, because they could think I'm a softie or this or that. I, I stayed on their butt pretty hard. After that, when we went to the field, no, no. Let's be relaxed. Let's just do our job. I'm not going to jump in on anybody rear end and stuff. So I changed my mood completely. And one of the great memories I had was that <clears throat> how uh, people in America came together was, you know, we canceled that week. The next week we went and played the Kansas City Chiefs. And that's a hard place to play because their fans are loud and they get on you and all that stuff really good. And I remember the night before the game, you know, all of us had the FY, the, the, the fire department hat, the police department hat. We had, we had ball caps on. And I said, gentlemen, you have the right to wear these, but do not, do not wear it backwards, sideways, or the bill flipped up. Out of respect, you, you put it front and center. That'll respect them. Well, when we took the field, they gave us a standing ovation. In Kansas City. In Kansas City, which has never been done, never. <laughs> the visiting team gets a standing ovation. And uh, we won the game. And uh, that picture in the locker room, I've got it hanging in my house because that's one of my proudest moments that I told them the night before, and there's a picture that every guy has a hat on, including Wellington there, and they're all front and center, showing respect. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was something, those are the things that, you remember when you're in sports. It's not always the wins and losses. It's the special times when people rally around it and, and respect you. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.